What's going on YouTube? Thanks for tuning in to another video here. I really appreciate it. Today, we're gonna to be talking about ideal versus non-ideal clients. If you're watching this video, odds are you're an entrepreneur, you're an agency founder, and you're starting to build your book of business and your clientele. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that it's so important to figure out what is an ideal client for your business? And it could vary depending on entrepreneur to entrepreneur. For me, I love working with clients that align with my lifestyle, my values, and my long-term business goals. But it has to always come from a place of like fun. So working with companies that really value and understand social media and are willing to try different things and are open to things and open to it being a process instead of being so rigid, that's so important for me. So let's hop into it here. I'm gonna be talking about what is ideal for me and what are some characteristics that you can look out for for your business as well so for me a big one is solving a major problem in a marketplace what does that mean it means that the company that i'm working for is actually solving a serious problem a problem that other companies would be willing to pay for and this essentially makes my job a little bit easier because i'm not marketing something that i don't believe in the last thing i want to do is market a company that doesn't solve a major problem and so you're really just pushing something that you don't believe in or pushing something that doesn't really make an impact at least to my standards next up for me in my business it's working with clients that have a background in education ed tech higher education k-12 vr you're a software company you value tiktok right these are traits and characteristics that i define as a good fit based off of the clients that we've worked for in the past and of course me as the entrepreneur selecting a specific niche that I wanna work with that I've found to be successful, the most successful. Another characteristic here is they have a podcast or they have some sort of pillar content. Part of my services is I offer video editing, short form editing, and if they already do a podcast, if they already have some sort of long form content, it's gonna be easy for me to know that I'm walking in there, we're gonna have content to pull from, and we're gonna be able to have something to work with as opposed to a company that has almost nothing to begin with. And last but not least, one of the biggest ones here, they're a growth stage company. They're not a startup that started yesterday with $5 in the bank account, but they're also not like a mature Series D company that's ready to IPO. So I found companies right in the middle of that spectrum actually fit nicely because they need to try as many things as possible on social media from a marketing standpoint to acquire customers, to grow, but they typically already have some reoccurring revenue and money to spend for marketing. All right, now let's talk about non-ideal characteristics slash red flag. Let's just call it what it is, a red flag. So for me, it's personality fit. Are they gonna mesh well with my personality? So for me, I wanna work with someone who is gonna be a good personality fit, that's gonna be chill like me sometimes, have similar values, similar interests. I guess personality really, for me, is like a deal breaker. Like, am I gonna be able to work with this person? How will I feel if this person puts time on my calendar? How am I feeling the personalities are gonna mesh based off of some initial calls or messages? I think that's really important. Another red flag, here here is altering or disrespecting the scope of services. And believe it or not, I had one client in the past when I first started my agency and he actually altered the contract. Something in the contract, I don't even remember, but he actually ended up altering it. And for me, when I received the contract back from him and he had like whited out certain things, it was like, how is this not a red flag? But again, it's like there are red flags that you might see and encounter along the way, even just like talking business, just talking like scope of services, pain points, right? Like you're going to be able to pick on some of those things with your EQ. Third one here, there's no clear grasp on the scope of services. I think this is a big one here. Like they don't really know what they want. And that that's a problem because if they don't really know what they want and you give them something and then they say, Hey, I want this. And then you, you give them that. And then they're still not happy. So if they don't really know what they want, or like you can't have them commit to something or a certain style, I think it's always really important to like be clear up front. Like, okay, this is the style that we're aiming for. And lastly, for me, a big red flag is clients that are looking to do 
lead generation with marketing. Bottom line is I'm doing branding. I'm doing demand generation work. I'm not giving you leads through this process over time. The creativity, the consistency will give you leads, but I'm not here to cold call anyone. I'm not here to give you a list of leads. Like that's not what my services are here for. They're branding and marketing and demand generation services. That's just what they are. So similar to dating, I think you also have to spend some time to date and really feel your clients out and really build out just like a couple of bullet points, just like how I did here, what's ideal and what's not ideal. So that way you can spend most of the time with your ideal clients who love working with you, who get the most value out of you, who pay you what you're worth and you love working with. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you uh, checking out this video.